Okay, so for our very first activity here, what I want to do is just get ourselves acclimated to how we're going to do part one of the class. Part one of the class, we're going to focus uh, all on the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript, the basic foundation of our app, which will work on all devices. Part two of the class is then where we go into our development environment to basically convert our web code into actual code that runs on an Android or iPhone or Windows phone. Then part three is the most advanced stuff with databases and such and publishing the app, putting it in a real app store. So since we're going to be writing a lot of code, we I have several code writing softwares that you might like. Or if you want to use your own, you can do that. but. The one I'm going to focus on in class here, <coughs> if you go to your Start menu, you can search for Notepad++. Now, obviously, in this room, we've got Windows computers. If you're at home on a Mac, you can use Sublime Text, you can use Brackets, you can use Atom, Text Wrangler, Dreamweaver, whatever. If you're on Windows and at home you like Brackets or RoboCode, or Eclipse, or Visual Studio, or whatever. You can use whatever code editing environment you like. But I recommend for our starting point, very quick, no-nonsense, powerful editor, Notepad++. It's a free download for Windows. There's no Mac version. But on the Mac, I would recommend something like Brackets, or Visual Code, Etc. You can ask me during the break. But for our class, go ahead and start Notepad++. You may get some pop-ups about updates. Just click No. Plugin Manager, just cancel that. We get this code editor, which may have some notes. Just ignore that. Let's go to File, Menu, New. and then File, Save As. If you brought a flash drive, you can save this to your flash drive. If you didn't, you can save it to the desktop. This practice stuff that we'll do right now is not mission critical. You don't even have to keep it. But I'm going to save this onto my flash drive. And actually, at the end of the day, Usually, I put a copy of my code in the network folder so that you can compare my code and your code in case something quite didn't work. I'm doing a save as, and we will call this uh, 2018.0201.html. Save as type hypertext markup language. So this is basic opening a file, <coughs> saving a file. We're doing it in Notepad, which is a code editor, one of many code editors out there. We want to save this file onto your flash drive. We can put today's date .html. So again, if you've already had the experience in using HTML, this first day is probably going to be very, very slow for you. But we're going to get quickly into it, pretty quick next time. Today I just want to kind of get a sense of people's levels. So we're going to make some very basic HTML, CSS, and probably JavaScript coding, just to get a little acclimated to see where you're at. In HTML, we're going to use the HTML tags of angle brackets, which is shift comma, shift period, the less than, the greater than symbol. And in between those two symbols, we'll start with exclamation point, doc type, space HTML. So we're going to write our doc type right here. This is going to define our whole document.
dot right here is our starting point of an HTML document. Our document type is HTML. And we're going to write uh, HTML code, which will be eventually translated into the right language for the right device. Because this is going to start off a website. This is going to start off a plain old website that you can you can uh, you know you can access. But the way I do this class is by using the common web languages, then plus something else that we'll learn. This will be converted into the right language for the right device. As I said earlier, if you were uh, if you were going to uh, create a an Android app traditionally, you'd need to program it in Java. Then you'd have to reprogram it in Objective C if you wanted it to go to the iPhone. Then you'd have to reprogram it over into C sharp if you wanted it to go over to Windows. Well, we're going to start with like a common language that will be translated to all the devices. We have another tag here, another code, so less than, greater than, and then inside of that, HTML. At the end of the line, press enter a couple of times. The HTML tag again, but this time slash HTML. So we're about to create HTML code. <coughs> and HTML, most of the time, is made out of pairs of tags. We're going to have a tag or a code that says, make this bold. We're going to have a pair that says, make this a link. We're going to have a pair that says, make this a paragraph. So we have pairs of tags. We're marking the document for it to do something, basically. Between these HTML tags, line 3, I'm going to tab and then type head tag. And very quickly, I'm not going to say angle bracket uh, less than, greater than, slash. I'm not going to say every single character very quickly because it's all exactly the same. Angle brackets, slash, tag, angle brackets, slash, tag, angle brackets, slash. It's a very consistent language. If I want to tell it, put an image here. The code looks very similar to put a paragraph here. Next line, angle brackets body, enter, slash angle brackets body. Here's a pair, body slash body, head slash head, HTML slash HTML. Doc type is a special case. It doesn't have a pair. Inside of head, we'll type title. This time, I'm going to keep it on the si on the same line, space slash title. Then in between those pairs, I'll type my first website. It's probably not your first website. That's OK. If it is your first web website, congratulations. You're a web developer now. If you've done this before, you should recognize this. And since we have three months to cover all aspects of app design, we will not have the time to cover every single tag or code of HTML. Um, that's why there's those books that I recommend in the syllabus. That's why there's those websites that I recommend in the syllabus. That's why there's also our, our front-end web development program or our introduction programs. We're not going to be able to cover every possible code, and we don't need to. Because even though it's impressive to be able to know every single code and show it off to people, it's not necessary for you to know everything. You just need to know what you need to know to make your app do what it needs to do. And what I don't know, I can look up. 
either in a good book or online. What our process is, we're going to write our code in a document, then we need to see the result in the web browser. In the beginning, part one, we're going to focus on making this project, then we can see it in a web browser. In part two, we're then going to convert it or evolve it into a real app. So the way our process works here is we type some code, and this is telling you you haven't saved. This little disk here says you haven't saved, it's red. You can click either the floppy disk up here to save, or you can go to File, Save, or Control S to save. We're going to write code, you're going to save your code, and then you're going to run your code. You see you've got a run menu where you can launch the different web browsers. So save what you've written so far and then go to run and choose any browser. I'm going to go with Firefox, it's the first one on the list. You can go to Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer, whatever. Is this feature of Notepad++? Is it what? Is a feature of Notepad++? Yes, Notepad++ <coughs> has this menu of run, yes. I'm going to run, launch in Firefox, and what I get is the web browser, and huh, I get an empty screen. What happened? I didn't put anything in it. I didn't put anything in the main area. I put a message in the title right there. So if you don't see my first website in the title of the browser, let's pause here. Did anyone have any trouble? Are you getting some result like this? Well, here then, I've displayed a title at the head of the web browser, at the top. I want to display some text right here in the main area, which is body. So going back to our code, line 7, I'm going to tab and write. It's, uh, it's common practice when someone is first learning a language. Um, for decades, the first thing that someone writes is traditionally, hello world. So we will make our project say, hello world. To get you used to that, we have to write our code, save our code, run our code. So I wrote something. I need to save it. I go up to run Firefox, or you can refresh your browser either way. So write the code, save the code, run the code. Don't click that extra run button up here. That does something else. You don't want that. You want to run launch in one of the browsers. And now you should see, now you should see the hello world text in the main body of the website. Eventually, what we type in body is what will appear in the main window of your app. So vertical, horizontal, regular phone size, small phone size, tablet. Basically, our project is mostly going to exist in the body. But this is what I have so far, hello world in the body, and my first website in the title, in the head. If it looks weird, if it didn't show up, that's when you raise your hand, I'll help you out. That's when you help each other out, or if you do help each other out, remember at a reasonable volume, we want to have something like this.
So this very simple thing is uh, a, uh, a website. Uh, it has the basic structure of a website. It's got the main HTML area, the head block, the body block, etc. We've got another tag over here. So HTML is made out of tags that are then rendered or interpreted by the web browser. So. Um, the web browser then takes those tags and does something with them. At the moment, Hello World doesn't have any extra markup. <coughs> it's just, it just shows Hello World. But actually, what I want to do is have Hello World to be big and bold and important looking. So I'm going to mark it with a different tag so that it looks big and bold and important. Let's back up to your line 7, where you've got Hello World. And this time, we'll, we'll write the H1 tag. That's a number 1, not an L. So I'm saying, starting from here, let's make this heading 1. Let's make it big and bold and important looking. So we need to say, OK, where do we stop that? We're starting it somewhere. We have to end it somewhere. Just like we say, start our title here, end our title here with slash. We said start the head, end the head with slash. Start body, end body. So what do you think we do to end the heading? Forward slash, actually. So slash h1. Yeah. So we start heading 1. We end heading 1 with a slash, forward slash. So now save it and run it. And now that we've actually marked it differently than the default, Hello World should appear big and bold and important looking. And this is the big idea of <coughs> HTML, hypertext markup language. HTML is hypertext markup language. It's a language, a computer language, regarding markup. We're marking from here to here. And hypertext is about links, which we'll talk about later. But now my Hello World was humble and now it's big and bold and important looking because I've given it a heading one tag. So we're going to do this a lot. We're going to write various tags to do various things. Eventually we'll write CSS for styling because I would like red text with a blue background. That's where CSS comes in. Then I would like that I click the word hello and it pops up and something happens. That's JavaScript. So HTML is our basic structure and content. CSS is our design. And JavaScript is our interactivity. And that would be great to write down in our notes. Well, we can write notes in our document. Right now, we're writing code that the web browser interprets. I want to write notes in my code. I want to leave myself a little note. This means this, or this does that, or leave a note for my other co-workers that are working on the app to tell them, don't forget to fix this. So we can write comments in our code. Let's say, before line 7, give yourself a new line 7. Uh, before your h1, we're going to write a comment, a comment tag. This one's got a very special syntax, a very special way to write it. Angle bracket, which is less than exclamation point, dash, dash, space. You should see all of this turns green. This is a comment, space, dash, dash, greater than. <coughs> oh. 
opening of the comment, closing of the comment, and it looks very different than the other tags we've seen so far. On some of these things, you just have to memorize them, and most of this is very consistent about how you write it. Once you get the basics of it, you should be able to then do this quickly. As I said, HTML is the easy one. CSS is a little harder, and JavaScript is the hard one. This is a comment. It can be broken up into multiple lines. Make sure that you press Enter to move that tag to its own line, because if you didn't do that, it'll look like this. That comment should be green, just like this comment. So I pressed Enter to move the ending of the comment to its own line. You can have any number of lines of comments as long as you have the opening and closing tags. A comment is ignored by the web browser and isn't interpreted. It isn't processed. You can have as many of these as you want. It can be one line, multiple lines. But it needs to be in that pair. So if you've never written HTML before and uh, you're learning this stuff, <coughs> I would recommend that you give yourself, or you write yourself comments as, as much as you can or as much as you want to annotate the code for yourself. Um, as I said a moment ago, this is a heading one, and it's making this text big and bold and important. H1, heading one, makes text big, bold, and important. As we get more complex, and we write more HTML, more CSS, and more JavaScript, I will write more comments, especially JavaScript. That's where a lot of things can go wrong. That's where it's very complex. One more comment. The three pillars of web app design, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, the structure and content, the design, the interactivity. So what the, what the app is, and, and what the text is, and, and the pictures, and that sort of thing, HTML. The colors, your drop shadows, your, your alignment of things, your columns, CSS. What it does, the user logs in. The user saves a picture. The user uploads to the database, JavaScript, the interactivity. Those are the three languages we'll cover in this class. And even if this class was non-stop, these three languages, three months is not enough. There's still plenty that you can always learn. But as I said, you don't need to have all of these languages memorized. Uh, I don't. I don't need to have them all memorized. I need to know how to look them up. And I need to know how to use logic to figure out what I need to do we'll be covering these languages in various ways and if you want even more info on them I've got those links in the hand in the syllabus and we've also got various classes here at the college and other colleges and we've got you know uh, lynda.com and udemy.com 
and all of these other online resources. UCSD Extension, we have lots of places where you can further learn this. You can go to the bookstore, borrow a few books on HTML, sit there all day long, never, never buy the book, and then learn that way too. Let's say we want to um, add more content here after hello world. Let's add HR. I can make a comment this way too. HR is horizontal rule. A simple line. No pair. This is one of the special cases that does not have a pair. And sometimes you see people write it like this. Both ways are valid. I'm gonna, I, I will put it both ways just to show you here. way. HR looks like <coughs> half complete, or HR in this very specific way, space slash, both are the same, basically. I'm going to write the shorter one because it's shorter. If I don't write the other one the right way, it won't work. So the more I have less to remember, the better. The less that I have more to remember, or the more that I have less to remember, the better. So both ways are compatible, and if you've learned in other classes in other ways, that's fine. If you're first starting off, the short way is fine. To see this result, you then want to save it and run it. You could also simply save it and go to your browser and refresh. I kind of like to do a run every time <coughs> because what happens is the web browser opens a new version, a new window. I kind of like to see my progress that way, especially as a beginner. The first time I ran it, I just had the title. The second run, I had also body. The third run, I had h1. The fourth run, I have the line. If you're doing refresh, you kind of don't have that history of what you're doing. It may not matter, but I kind of like that as a beginner to see how it evolved. And that happens when you do run every time. At the moment, that line goes all the way across the screen. I would love it if it only went halfway through or maybe a quarter of the way. Well, that's when CSS comes in. HTML is all about the structure. But then CSS is the design. How big is the text? What color is the text? How long is the line? How many columns do I have? So we're not there yet. I, I don't have the, the knowledge yet to write CSS to change my design yet. After my horizontal rule, we'll write H2. I'm going to break this into two lines. Mad one, day one. So the initials for our class is Mad, Mobile Apps Development. And it's part one this month. It's day one. I've been writing these HTML tags sometimes on one line sometimes on two lines. I wrote heading one on one line, start and end. I wrote heading two on two lines, start and end. It doesn't matter if you write them on multiple lines or single lines. Checking this result gives me my text. And if I were to have this on one line, it would be, it should be the exact same thing. The reason why you may divide it into multiple lines is for readability. Perhaps it's a little easier to read 
this, when it's divided into three lines, then one line. So there's no right or wrong here. I usually break things up into multiple lines <coughs> so that you can read it. And if it's just some sort of simple text, one line is enough. That would have worked fine as one line. Next line, I'm on line 24. You may be on line 24 or 29 or 32, whatever, doesn't matter. Your line numbers on the left don't need to be exactly the same as mine. They often do not line up. They often don't synchronize because I'm writing extra comments or, or you're breaking up your lines in multiple ways. That's fine. And you're noticing that when I tab here, this is also optional. I could start writing my text right here, or I could start writing it tabbed over here. This is also optionally just for us to be able to read it. When something is tabbed in and it's indented, it's a child element of that, parent element. It's a lot easier to see it. Even if it's not indented, it's still a child of that parent. But it's very common to have these tabbed in for readability. We talked about the broad concepts of the class. Enter. We looked at examples of student work. Enter. And we started some basic coding. So as usual, I write some code, I save the code, I run the code. And so what I've written here is P for paragraph. I've created a paragraph, three lines. <coughs> I'm going to save it and run it. I'm going to see a paragraph of three lines. Nope, it's, it's one line. Even though I wrote in Notepad++ or any code editor, even though I wrote three separate lines, even though I separated them with enters, the web browser then ignored those enters. And that's not, I'm running Firefox, that's not Firefox being annoying. If I go to Chrome, Chrome will also ignore those three lines and show it as one. Well, the web browser ignores several things. It ignores spaces. If I tab this a lot, it will not push the, that text to the right. If I press spaces a lot, it will not create spaces. And when I pressed Enter, it ignored that Enter. So this is one of the many examples that we will see about that we have to we have to tell the computer exactly what we want. I <coughs> wanted three separate lines. I wanted it tabbed over. It didn't do it. Because the defaults, it's programmed in a way that there are defaults. We sometimes have to override those defaults. So we can make a note here. P tag is a paragraph. White space is ignored. Tabs are ignored. Enters are ignored. Uh, it's n I maybe worded it odd here, but it's not that spaces are ignored in a paragraph. No, uh, everywhere. In HTML, in general, white space is ignored, tabs are ignored, enters are ignored. Not just because it's in a paragraph are those ignored. 
they would have been ignored up here also on H2. If I put in a bunch of spaces <coughs> in between all of these words, it would still have ignored it even though I put it into an H2, a heading number 2. We have then, as usual, the right tag for the right task. We have the right tag for the right task. We have a task of creating a paragraph, so we have a tag for it. We have a task of a heading, we have a tag for it. Think about it like this, this, this document in the real world even from a distance, you know, you can't read it, but you can see that it's d divided up into big text, small text, etc. This big text in the middle are headings. So we've marked our document to be a heading, heading one, or heading two, a subheading. Then regular text is paragraph text. So that's what we've got there, P for paragraph. I want to break these lines. So at the end, I can add the BR tag break that breaks each line so we see a line then it in, then it gets to the break it processes that next line gets to the end of that breaks it next line we don't need an extra break there because then the paragraph ends br or BR to create line breaks. So now when you see the result in the browser, three lines. So as we're writing our code here, things could go wrong, of course. <coughs> things could go wrong, of course. I could um, forget to close an angle bracket, or maybe I wrote the wrong tag here, maybe I wrote P and then slash Q, my finger mi missed. Well, with most civilized code editors like this, you get some basic color coding. If we're running a basic text editor, it's all black text. But with something like Notepad++ or brackets or Sublime or whatever, you get color coding. And it's, it's there to help you understand your code. You see that comments are green. Other code editors use different colors. I'm just talking about Notepad++. Comments are green. Valid tags are blue. Regular content is black, etc. And do you notice that when you click, for example, on H2, it should highlight and find its pair. When I click on that paragraph, either the starting or ending tag, it should highlight and find its pair. If it doesn't find its pair, that's one way for you to troubleshoot what went wrong. I clicked on P, the pair does not highlight, following the dotted line, oh, I see, I wrote a Q instead of a P. Backwards. <coughs> Then when I have the right tag, it says it ended here, it started here. And then it highlights in a different kind of color. Selecting body should then highlight all the way back to the top, as well as HTML. So most of the time, we're going to have pairs of tags. We have already have one special case here. HR, horizontal rule, does not have a pair. And break does not have a pair.
we'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. Let's say we create another paragraph. We're going to create another paragraph right here. Start the P tag, and the P tag, some content in the middle. Uh, I want to display an image here and some text near the image. So inside of that next paragraph, I'll create an image here. Now, again, there's lots of details, and you may say, well, we used H1 and then H2. Why don't we use P1 and P2? There, there isn't a hierarchy of paragraphs. They're all paragraphs. And again, <coughs> again, there's a lot of details that we'll get to, but the book is good, those websites, to get all of the details. But for the moment, let's say we're going to create an image here. So we need the, the tag of image. It's just IMG. And this is one that does not have a pair. Image tag doesn't have a pair. But it has attributes. Over here I said, here's a paragraph, there's the content. Over there I said, there's a heading too, there's the content. Here I'm trying to say, here's an image. But where's the image? So I need an attribute that further describes where's the image. Inside of the angle brackets, IMG space, inside of the angle brackets, there's a space. And then we write the attribute href, no, sorry, uh, src equals quote, end quote. That is an attribute. There's an image. The source of the image <coughs> will be right here. So this syntax right here this is an attribute of a tag. I'm giving more detail. Attribute is more detail about the tag. The detail that I would need here is the picture. So if I had a picture, I could simply write its name. Let's try this, cat.jpg. Save it and run it. What do you get? I'm trying to display an image. Here's its source. Here's the name of the picture. So then when I run it, broken link. No picture. Because this assumes you've got a, a picture in the same place as you've got this HTML file. At the moment, my HTML file is on my flash drive, right there. But I don't have a picture called cat.jpg in the same folder. I have pictures somewhere else in other folders and such. So I would need something more complete. I would need a fuller path, something like this. C colon backslash pictures slash cute slash backslash cat.jpg. So something like that is saying the source of this image is on the C drive, in the pictures folder, in the cute folder, you will find cat JPEG. That still won't work because we don't have a pictures folder and a cute subfolder on these computers. What could also work here in the quotes is, well, what about if I have HTTP? colon slash slash cats dot com slash pictures slash cat. That 
could work as well. A link to a picture <coughs> online. If I have the full address to the picture online, that won't work either. I don't think there's I don't think that picture really exists on the internet. We're going to borrow a picture of mine that I have on one of my websites. So I do have a picture that we can borrow that's on the web that anyone can use. We can link to it. So I'm going to delete the stuff inside the quotes. And what you can do is, in your web browser, you can go to my site, which is vmcink.net. I've got a few pictures at the bottom of the screen that we can borrow. If it loads up, if we don't crash the site. There we go. So vmcink.net. At the very bottom, there's a, a couple of pictures. Uh, depending on the web browser, I'm in Firefox. In Firefox, when I see a picture, I can right-click it and select Copy Image Location. In Chrome, it might say something like Copy Image Address, or maybe Copy URL or something. It depends on your browser. But in Firefox, I've got a picture here. Right-click, Copy <coughs> Image Location. And now when I paste that in to the source, Yes. Any web browser will work. So then I get the address right here, and instead of you typing this manually, it's that huge address right there, and that should show my picture on your website. When I check this result, now I actually have a picture in my website. It's too big. I want to resize it and all of that. That's where CSS comes in. <coughs> We're going to take a break in a moment, but this is kind of how the class will go. We're going to write a lot of code. I'll be explaining it. We'll be running it. We'll be checking it in the browser. We'll, be, we'll, we'll make sure it works. Uh, we don't want to go too far along if your code doesn't work because it does build upon itself. As I said, at any point, you can raise your hand. I help you out. I help you during the break. Lab time, you can help each other out. But this is going to be sort of the way we run the class. We'll take our second break. It's about 7.55-ish. We'll take a break until 8.05, and then we'll go on. If it's not quite working at this point, call me over. If it's working, take a break. We'll be back at 8.55.